uh, good morning. Thank you all for coming out and, and uh, being with us today. Uh, this announcement that we're making today is the culmination of uh, many months of, of uh, hard work by the people of Texas A&M and their partners at GlaxoSmithKline. Um, years of, of, of dedication, uh, and I might add investment uh, at the state level. Uh, many of you who had uh, uh, toiled in that vineyard over the last decade. We've invested in innovative programs uh, to prioritize research in our state, both at our universities and at the private sector level. And through tools like the Texas Emerging Technology Fund, we've encouraged academic research and the development of cutting edge industries. That has helped Texas vastly expand opportunities for those inspired and driven to create new treatments and new technologies. Today, Texas workforce, talent, their universities, their business climate has made us a leader in high-tech innovation, research development, and commercialization. In 2009, the state made a substantial ETF investment to create the National Center for Therapeutic Manufacturing at Texas A&M. That helped pave the way to last year's announcement for A&M to be the home of the three Centers for Innovation and Advanced Development and Manufacturing. Today we're taking it another step farther, and it is my pleasure to announce that Texas A&M has been selected for a cutting-edge vaccine manufacturing facility, a $91 million center that will help rapidly develop and manufacture vaccines to help combat influenza outbreaks all around the globe. Not only will this keep more Americans safer from an epidemic, but it'll bring more than $41 billion in in-state expenditures over the next 25 years and directly and indirectly create more than 6,800 jobs in Texas. Now, it's fitting that this facility is coming to Texas, which is home to technology advancements that have helped shape our nation and our world over the last century whether it is oil field innovation that is uh, today opening up shell plays around the world, whether it is the development of the integrated circuit by Texas Instruments in the 1950s and through the heart of the space race in Houston at Johnson Space Center. Texas is home to innovative minds and world-changing ideals. Just recently, a pair of reports came out highlighting the thousands of clinical trials currently ongoing in Texas, with the National Institutes of Health ranking us second in the nation in 2012. Whether it's in biotech or communications or commerce or privatized efforts to serve the needs of the next generation of space explorers, you will find Texas at the forefront of the movement. This new facility builds upon that tradition, and I congratulate everyone who has been involved with this, and I look forward to some great things happening in the decades to come. And now it's my uh, great privilege to um, cede the pulpit here to uh, another wonderful friend and a great Texan and a man who had substantial influence in today's announcement, the Chancellor of Texas A&M, John Sharp. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Governor. Well, it's my great pride and pleasure uh, to be able to be here to pick the first fruits of trees planted uh, by this Board of Regents, Governor Perry, Brett Jawa, Guy Dietrich, and so many others. Some of our regents are here. John White played a key role in this. Elaine Mendoza, Phil Adams, Morris Foster, and so many others. Uh, this, is a, this is something that 20 years from now, I believe people will say, 
This was one of the most significant economic development moments uh, that ever occurred in Texas because what we are creating here and will create is the third coast of biopharmaceuticals. It will be game changing, not just for the world and, and not just for Texas, but for, but for folks everywhere. Um, I wanna say a bit, a bit about the governor. The governor uh, started this process. Uh, Brett Giroir, uh is the brains behind it. He had the vision uh, early on even when he was in DARPA before he came to Texas A&M uh, to be able to produce this when, when almost nobody believed it was a possibility. We have Governor Perry to thank, we have Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst to thank, we have Speaker Strauss to thank, uh, any one of which could have killed this project uh, at any time in the process. And so because of their commitment and their dedication to this, uh, this exists uh, for the state of Texas and for Texas A&M. Um, this is a unique public-private uh, uh, formula to assure a strong biosecurity uh, product development and manufacturing base on U.S. soil for the first time. This ensures that the nation uh, will have rapid access to vaccines and therapeutics in the advent of influenza pandemics or chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear attacks. It is because of the vision of the governor and the lieutenant governor and the speaker helping him to methodically cultivate and grow the biopharmaceutical and technology industries in Texas that we're here today. It's because of this investment that we are making uh, to attract the brightest minds throughout Texas A&M like Dr. Jawa and Vice Chancellor, our Vice Chancellor for Strategic Initiatives who heads the Center for Innovation. With our shared focus on excellence in education, research, and service, the Texas A&M University system institutions continue to grow and to grow in partnerships with other universities. The University of Texas is involved in this. Texas Tech University is involved in this. MD Anderson is involved in this. Blinn College is involved in this from workforce and many others throughout the state of Texas and they'll become more and more involved as the process goes on. With our shared focus on ex excellence in education, research and service, Texas a and University continues to grow and by investing in research and technology, uh, measuring education outcomes and partnering with those who share our commitment like GlaxoSmithKline will continue to lead the nation. It is indeed a pleasure for us to partner with the finest uh, pharma pharmaceutical company uh, on planet Earth uh, to bring them to Texas and to bring them to College Station. And it is a real honor to be associated with them uh, and a testament to the professors and the faculty and the great minds at Texas A&M that they would come and be with us. Uh, next, I'd like to present the person that had the vision to do this in the first place. Uh, Dr. Girard was at DARPA. He came to us from DARPA. He was heavily recruited, heavily recruited by some people in this room. And we are, one of the great blessings we've had is that this, this guy was able to come here. He had the vision. He now runs the Center for Innovation. Uh, when you ask a tech, usually when people ask me a technical question and they don't know Dr. Draw, I said, let me tell you how simple that is. I'm gonna have my driver uh, answer this question for you and point to him. <laughs> uh, so he'll do most of the answering of technical questions. Without this man, this would not have happened. Dr. Brett Draw. Uh, thank you, Governor and Chancellor. Uh, I want to give a little specific information about what we're talking about today. In June of last year, the Texas a and University System was awarded one of three National Centers for Innovation and Advanced Development and Manufacturing by the Department of Health and Human Services, the goals of which are the following. First is to provide protection against pandemic influenza, as well as any chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear threats. Equally as importantly, our center was charged, as the other centers are, with tra tra training the next generation of scientists, engineers, and technologists uh, to assure our national security for decades to come. And Dr. Robin Robinson, um, the, the real mind and strategist behind these centers, and Director Abarta will speak about that momentarily. A key strength of our proposal was the potential we had 
to build an unequaled team of commercial and academic partners. Today, we welcome GlaxoSmithKline, one of the world's greatest developers of vaccines, as our key partner within the A&M Center. So what does that mean? Specifically, that means that GSK is officially under subcontract to the Texas A&M system, and that subcontract and related materials have been authorized and approved by the U.S. government. Within this partnership, the A&M system and GSK will locate a new state-of-the-art biopharmaceutical manufacturing facility for GSK's cell-based influenza vaccine in Bryan College Station, Texas. The facility is currently in advanced schematic design already, will be approximately 110,000 square feet and at a contracted cost of $91 million. The facility, and more importantly, the highly trained people who work in that facility, will eventually provide 50 million doses of pandemic influenza vaccine to our nation within four months of that pandemic strain notification by the U.S. government. The facility will also manufacture GSK's cell-based seasonal influenza vaccine to augment the nation's current supply of egg-based annual vaccines. So why GSK? College Station is not exactly at the crossroads between Philadelphia and Brussels. So we get this question very often. Um, our partnership with GSK was built on an almost decade uh, relationship between Texas A&M and the Wallonia region of Belgium. This has been a working collaborative re relationship for a decade. Specific discussions for this project date back to the spring of 2010. So this is, this is long in the making. In GSK, we found the ideal partner for three reasons, and I, and I want to be very specific about that. GSK manufactures and distributes over 1.4 billion vaccines per year worldwide, with 11 distinct vaccines approved in the United States. Therefore, GSK brings unparalleled experience in the global biopharmaceutical industry to Texas A&M and to the state of Texas. Secondly, GSK's cell-based influenza vaccine program, this is in contrast to egg-based programs, in our opinion, represents a critical technical breakthrough to solve the nation's challenges for providing safe and effective vaccines within a time frame when, when, when which they are most needed. And finally, in GSK, we found like-mindedness in their commitment to innovation, applied research, development, education of students, and dedication of public service. In other words, we matched philosophically. Last point I want to emphasize is that of the three national centers, only one is led by an academic institution. As such, I believe Texas A&M really does epitomize the modern interpretation of what it means to be a land-grant university. We have seized leadership roles in practical teaching and practical research, not related to 19th century industrial revolution, but the 21st century bio-revolution. Not just related to strategy for traditional armed conflict, but 21st century science and technology to protect our country from asymmetric threats of terrorist organizations and rogue states. And finally, a word of gratitude to my team. Uh, many are here today and many are still working back in College Station. Uh, they really are a testament to what a small team of talented people can accomplish if they're really freed up to innovate, and I thank the Chancellor for doing that. If they're fueled by passion, and we thank all the patients and all the people who need these vaccines for fueling us. And they're given an environment, a nurturing environment like the state of Texas can provide. And now I'm privileged to introduce Mr. Antoon Lumens, who's Senior Vice President, General Counsel, and Head of Business Development and Strategic Alliances for GSK Vaccines. Thank you. Governor Perry, uh, Chancellor Sharp, um, Dr. Robinson, uh, Brett, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great, great privilege for me to be here. Um, as a father of two Baylor students, I'm, I'm a regular visitor of the state and I'm always happy to be here. By the way, Governor, you didn't notice, but it's the second time I'm here at the state capitol. The first time was about 12 years ago and I came here by bike all the way from Houston participating in oh, MS150. So it is always a pleasure being here. It's always a great day for, uh, also a great day for GSK. Um, we are really thrilled to announce here the consortium that we're gonna start now with uh, Texas A&M. 
We are very privileged, Governor uh, Chancellor, to work with Texas A&M. Um, what we learned over the last couple of years is the can-do attitude of Texas A&M. I had many meetings with the board as, as well myself, and I see a very strong commitment um, keeping the line long term on a project that needs uh, perseverance. So in Texas A&M, who is known not only for its uh, dedication to service, but also its te te technology, its, its commitment to technology, we really found the ideal partner. So thanks for your kind words, uh, Dr. Girard. Um, indeed, GlaxoSmithKline is the world vaccine leader in terms of um, providing global solutions to the world. We also have a very significant presence in the United States. And we want to use this uh, to build on our platform. And particularly in Texas, I think this will open uh, doors. So we have a long tradition in developing vaccines. We have a large uh, industrial capability, development capability uh, for vaccines. And that includes, of course, the flu. So we've been working on the flu vaccine for over 30 years now. And we are providing new technology, uh, cell cultures uh, on which uh, um, Dr. Girard just commented. So I would like to thank in particular uh, Governor Perry for your vision and also um, the fact that we're going to establish here a nimble, flexible facility that's fully integrated. Um, I think it will be a cost-effective solution and will bring vaccines to the United States very quickly as part of biodefense and pre pandemic preparedness. I also want to thank my friends, which are now my friends at Texas A&M, um, for all the, uh, the commitment that you've provided and also the fantastic collaboration we have. Because one thing I did learn over the last couple of years is our ability to work together. We're not exactly neighbors, but in mind we're really very close. And then lastly, I want to thank, of course, HHS, uh, BARDA, who has designed basically this whole concept of fronting. Uh, this project with an uh, academic institution backed up by a technology partner, which is uh, GSK, and of course the funding that you provided. So I'd like now to introduce to you uh, Dr. Robinson, with whom we worked over the last couple of years. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to be here, Governor Perry, Chancellor Sharp, Brett. Anton, it's my pleasure to be here. Howdy. Howdy. Yeah. We are very pleased to be a partner with Texas A&M and the entire consortium of the A&M system with GlaxoSmithKline. We've been a partner with GlaxoSmithKline for many years at HHS and specifically with BARDA. This is part of the solution to provide domestic security for this nation for biodefense or against Mother Nature against Mother Nature, whether it be pandemic influenza, or it could be the new coronavirus that's uh, percolating in the Middle East right now. This facility, going forward, would be able to do that. And so uh, this partnership also exemplifies that the government and industry can work together. You hear in Washington many, many times, industry and, and government just can't get along. We've had experience where that actually is true, and this is being replicated here with partnerships both at the federal, state, and with industry partners. And um, being a veteran of the 2009 H1N1 pandemic, had we not had that partnership, we would not have been able to deliver. Had we had those had the resources now, back in three years ago, we would have been able to even save even more lives. And going forward, with a long-term relationship of up to 25 years that the federal government will be involved supporting this, we will be have, able to make that partnership serve not only the, the nation but also the globe in terms of vaccines, biological, and therapeutics. There are four major areas here that as Brett pointed out. One is that we will be able to help others. And that's very important that the state of Texas and Texas A&M system will actually be able to help other companies that are in biodefense, developers of anthrax vaccines, or of stem cell research uh, that will lead to a radiation treatment. Come here, learn how to do it better, and be able to provide that not only in our events, but also in public health. Secondly, in an emergency, whether it be pandemic influenza or a new emerging infectious disease, 
this will be one of the frontline centers providing it for the country. Thirdly is that the workforce development is a, is a sore problem in this country. We've outsourced so much that we have to rebuild the next generation of developers of vaccines and manufacturers, whether they're at the top line or they're at the, right on the uh, plant line making those products, that they're there and they're trained and that they actually pay taxes like the rest of us and provide that great tax. So the last point is it provides jobs and allows this country to stay in a leadership uh, role in biotechnology going forward that has enjoyed for many, many years. So it's my pleasure to be, again, HHS, part of this partnership. Thank you. Dr. Robinson, thank you very much. And to uh, the other participants, thank you. We'll be happy to.